to Gun and Shot TV. I'm going to be talking about this Rossi R92. Some of you have seen the uh, video I made entitled uh, 50 Cent Action Job, where I show you how to respring this gun and put in a lighter spring and go in and polish everything up, clean everything up. I not only did that, I've also cut down the spring in the mag tube. Um, I think it was only maybe that much uncompressed sticking out the end that I cut off. Um, look around online, you can find some more information on that. And that allows the cartridges to be loaded easier. And you also get maybe one or two more in the pipe. I think this now holds 12 38 Special and 11 357 Magnum in the tube. And then you could also put one extra one in the chamber for a little bit of extra capacity. I also went and uh, stripped the stock and dyed it with some, I think it was Danish, Danish oil. Give it a little bit nicer finish than what it left the factory with, although taking this four stock off, four end pardon, was a pain. Um, trying to put it back together involved breaking this screw and having to get new ones from Rossi and then I ended up having to dremel out, not dremel, but slowly file out the barrel a little bit with a jeweler's file to get the uh, screw back in because apparently they do it with some sort of hydraulic press or something in the factory. I have no idea who thought that was a great idea. But after all that, I've shot it quite a bit. Now, the only problem I have with it anymore is I do have a slight problem um, if I'm shooting 105 grain very light bullets because in a 38 special case because the bullets are so light when the lifter flips them up, they'll flip all the way up and be pointing straight up or even sometimes fly out of the action. Now, that's probably my fault. They are very light bullets. Um, they're cheap and fun to shoot, so it's not a huge concern, but... That's really the only problem I have with this gun anymore, and that is due to the fact that the bullets are way too small um, as far as too light. Uh, other than that, I really don't have much problem with it. I did have one other slight issue, and that this gun has buckhorn, traditional buckhorn sights with a brass bead front post. I was having problems, and I'm looking around online, a lot of people have problems with these guns. They can't seem to get them to shoot at the right elevation. Everyone says they either shoot low or they shoot high. Um, I was having problems too. I was, if you look at the buckhorn like this, there's a very small notch at the bottom. I wasn't sure if I was supposed to line the sight post up in that. Well, when I did, I was shooting about four or six inches low. So I'm like, well, that's obviously not right. Um, so I tried lining the front post up with the top of the buckhorns. That also did not, did not work. Now I was shooting high. Did a little bit more research and I found out you should treat the buckhorns much like you would a ghost ring. So in a ghost ring you take your front post and you line it up exactly in the middle. It's going to be hard to do this on camera. But you line it up in the middle so the, the post is sitting right in the middle of the ghost ring. Well on the buckhorns you're going to want to line it up so pretend there's a top here and just line it up so it's right in the middle. That's going to be a quick way to acquire a target. It's not going to be perfect. You're never going to, you know, shoot a competition I would think with it but for something within a hundred yards that's uh, large like a deer or a person or something like that that was sufficient for what they wanted to shoot at the time if you need better accuracy than that you can always get a tang sight or a peep sight but that's once once I got that down that I need to be centering the post in the buckhorns the rifle shoots great I have no problem hitting anything I want to aim at so that, I mean, that's the big thing. And I thought it was kind of weird because looking around, I could find a lot of information about people unhappy with where the rifles were shooting, but I couldn't find any information. You know, the owner's manual, nothing says, hey, by the way, this is how you shoot with buckhorns. So I, I think that's something that a lot of people would probably benefit from knowing because I know, I mean, I, I have other Winchester rifles. I've got a Model 94, but most things have what's, now called modified buckhorns, where it kind of looks like a buckhorn, but it still has that V-notch to line up your front post. So on a sight like that, you know, you're still you're still shooting like a traditional sight. So in this case, you do have to take the buckhorns into account and specifically change how you're aiming to be able to hit what you shoot at. But as I said, now with that taken care of, the only real issue I have is shooting super light 105 grain bullets and 38 special cases. Um, but that's kind of the nature of the beast, I think. Uh, shooting 38 specials in a 357 lever gun is never a guarantee anyways. Um, usually they, they can feed them, but there's problems. So 
I'm not going to point that as being a negative to the gun. 158 grain heavier bullets don't do that. So that once again is not something I would be concerned about um, unless you're reloading 105 grains anyways. But that said, for I think I paid about $460 for this, a great gun. I did a little bit of work, a couple little tweaks here and there, but now it's to a point that it shoots awesome, it's flawless, it's fun, and the reloading, I'm, I'm loading for about five cents a round, so it's a really cheap, fun center fire rifle to shoot. So if you see one cheap, I know they do sell for about two, three hundred dollars, sometimes used, if you find a good deal on one, I would snatch it up. They're definitely worth playing with, and if you don't like it, you can always sell it on down the road and get your money back.